Good morning, my rural chum. Mr. Dr. Robotnik. I'm going to give you five seconds to tell me where it is. Wait, don't hurt him. I loved it. I thought it was great. You know, I had a little bit of my concerns, uh, my own concerns, and, uh, you know, people jumped right in there, and uh, they will not be ignored. <laughs> and that's the new world, you know? And so uh, I think that was very incredibly helpful. You know, I think it was great because I had my own concerns, and when they kind of matched it, I went, oh, good, that's great. And, uh, you know, Jeff uh, Fowler was just, you know, Johnny on the spot, ready to do it, ready to get into it. And I think they did a great job. They really did, yeah. So yeah. Cute. So we're all in this together, man. I love this guy. This guy looks gorgeous. Also, his face, I had little dots on my face, so all my facial things become his facial things, which is very exciting. I love it. Yeah, yeah I love it. Um, yeah, I, I grew up playing the video game. Um, of course, I was 18 or 19 when the game came out, so I, w I didn't really grow up playing it, but I played video games my whole life. It was Atari and television, Nintendo, Mario Brothers, and then Sonic hit the stage, and it was like, I hadn't played a game that fast before with a fast character like that, so I was immersed myself in that. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously he has a specific look, and I, I when, when all that happened, we were done filming, like, I, three months out when the trailer hit, and it was like, to me, it put a massive smile on my face because it, it reminded me how iconic this character is and how passionate that fan base is. And so it was like, yes, these are people that care, that want this to be right and want to see this movie. It was like, fantastic. Um, let's, uh, you know, let's make everybody happy. Whatever this creature is, I'm going to uncover the source of its power. Yeah, hey. I love it all. I love all the different colors, you know, and and something like this, you know, I've been doing some serious stuff and then and then something like this comes along and it's just an opportunity presented to me by the universe, you know. It's like a, it's a gift. It's just uh oh, uh you know, somebody left the corral door open. <laughs> and uh, you know, the Mustang must run. You know, so it's uh, it's really kind of fun. It's really kind of great, and it's a it's a part of me that never leaves. You know, people don't have to worry that I'm never gonna have that part of my brain that wants to just have some silly fun. You know. <laughs>honestly I'm so gratified by that kind of stuff like I have people coming up to me going I just literally was the mask on Halloween or uh, or new filmmakers that have just broken through that are going like I started because of dumb and dumber or whatever but like it's really fun when you see like a little kid dressed up as the Grinch or something like that or they come up to me in the street and you know their parents says you know who that is that's the Grinch and I go I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. You know, and, uh, and their parents go, oh, I thought it was makeup. <laughs> you know? So it's so fun. It's so, it's so gratifying. So, you know, if, if I get lucky, if people like it and their kids like it, then, you know, I get to see it next Halloween. And you could see a couple of costumes, like somebody could wear the, the first Dr. Robotnik version and then the yeah. second. Yeah, well, he's going to evolve, you know. The plans to evolve him is really cool. Oh, give me a big fat break! That was an illegal left, by the way. I think they were drawn to me, you know. They, the, all the projects have always found me. Even if I don't know it, I'm not aware of it when it happens, and I think I'm making a conscious decision to do something, it always turns out a little while in or a little while after that I realize my subconscious mind is, is really my agent and my, uh, uh, my maestro, and it has its own plan. And when I write something, when I sculpt something, when I paint something, uh, it's the same thing. It's like I can consciously decide to do something and then I, invariably a year later I, I realized oh my subconscious mind was trying to tell me where I was you know it was actually trying to tell me where I was so it's a fascinating process to me and in playing characters is great too because you know you look at a video game and there's not much to it you know there's not much to the development of the characters um, and you have to kind of like really flesh it out and I look at it like, you know, character like lightning starts from the ground up, you know? 
And uh, so all of that madness has to come from someplace. It can't just be madness for madness sake. It comes from a, a feeling in this character of, of absolute worthlessness, you know, combined with genius. You know, so uh, he wants to own the world. He wants to control the exterior and the interior of every human being. He, he basically is at war with the world because he was neglected by it, you know? So it's fun to play. Oh my God, stop the car right what? now. What? The world's largest rubber band ball? We gotta see it. So uh, within the lines itself, we had a great script. We had two incredible writers write an incredible script, which always starts like that. And then Jeff Fowler, the director, who I think did an incredible, do you see the movie? Yeah. He did an incredible job. Yeah. It's his first big feature film, and I thought he did such a good job. When we're in the booth, uh, even beforehand with a table read, if I had punches, if I had pitches, I could say and do whatever I want. Because for me, it doesn't cost them extra money. <laughs> We're not rolling cameras, I'm in a booth, you know what I mean? So we could do whatever we wanted. So, uh, and I also, just because I really cared about this movie, um, I would even say, hey, if I had an ADR session, uh, can I come in an hour early, watch whatever we've done in the past, uh, just in case I can think of any new jokes? And he would be like, of course, of course, yeah, you want to make it funnier? Yes. So I came in a couple times, saw the movie myself, just so I can keep punching myself up, which I thought was, he was, he gave us such a leash to be creative and to be wonderful, and I think it really shows in the film. Eh, you're right, it was lame. Gift shop was cool though. Oh yeah, well there's one crazy thing that I knew wasn't gonna go in, but uh, I don't know if you ever played the video game. When you when you start a Sega Genesis, or, or for this game in particular, when you start a Genesis, there's a thing that goes, Sega! And um, I was like, oh, you know what? We should record me doing that. So we had me harmonize with myself in 10 tracks, like me going, Sega, 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 and do it like that. And I was like, can we put that at the beginning of the movie? He's like, let's do it. And so it never got put in the movie, but I have it on my phone. It's a very silly specific that maybe some of your people that watch this will understand. Let me show you how it's done. So should we get out of here? Yeah, time to go. The way that I approached it is, first of all, I played the games. And I realized how fast that he ran. And I was like, okay, I want to find a way to bring the speed and energy into the performance. And then I read the script and I was like, you know what this is? Let's strip away that it's a hedgehog. It's a little boy that is really excited to do things and has never been allowed to do things. And all of a sudden, now he's allowed. He's allowed to have a friend, he's allowed to do all these things. If I could find a way to bring the energy of being a little kid and like show, oh my God, we can do this, we can do this. I was like, if I could do that, I think then people will really connect with him a bit more and almost be like, oh, it happens to be a kid that looks like, a, you know what I mean? And then like the, the bromance works better and then the heart works better. So that was the goal. I always want to do this. <laughs> John Raphael. Although when Sonic gets hit by anything, he loses all of his coins, all of his rings rather, uh, all of his rings. So it could be Sonic because one hit and all of his rings are gone. But John Raphael just doesn't know what he's, I mean, he, he loses money not even understanding why or how. I think we, there's one callback to John Raphael. I did a couple of Jim Carrey impressions in this. The, there's a clip where I have a fish on my head and I go through this thing where it's like, I did this, I did this, I did this, there's a fish on my head. And I tried to do it like, there's a Dumb and Dumber line, this is very nerdy, but where he goes like, da -da 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 -da, our pet's heads are falling off. And I tried to emulate him. And there's one more that I haven't, it has, the clip hasn't come out yet. Cause I was like, how funny if I did a little bit of Jim Carrey impersonation, like in just like a sentence or two throughout the movie. So there's one more that is a total emulation of him as well. But for John Ralphio, I think we did one, the worst. I think someone calls me the worst, but I don't sing it. All right, get in the truck. Really? You're gonna help me? I guess it is a little bit my fault that all this is happening to you. Uh, yeah, I guess, like, I guess I've been in a few of them. I, it was Enchanted, I was a little squirrel, like, <laughs> running around next to me, and then Hop uh, with Russell Brand doing the voice of that. Um, it's fun, like, I have three kids, and sometimes it's nice to do a, a great film. That, like, we have this conversation so many times with, I get my, my 18 year old, my 14 year old, my seven year old, and sit on the couch and go, what movie can we all watch? And it's a tough one. Like there's 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 not many out there, but like this is the kind of movie that we can all sit and enjoy, because there's the action and the cute character, video game character that the kids will love. But then there's the humor that the kids will also get. But the adults, it's sharp enough for the adults. They'll they'll love to see Jim Jim Carrey back in pure form and 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 this iconic character that they grew up playing uh, on the video game come to come to life. So, yeah, it's a it's. It was like a no-brainer for me. Yeah, I want to be a part of that world. That doesn't sound good. No, thinking is bad. Get rid of it. I'm trying. Throw it out the window. Throw it anywhere. Yeah, it's it's really just, it, it takes a commitment to uh, making it feel as real as possible, right? It's like, let's not 
oversell it that it's, you know, a cartoon, right? Like, it's, let's keep the dialogue real, make it feel like it's two buddies who are kind of an odd couple at first. Um, and it can feel very natural. The banter and the back and forth can feel, and knowing that Ben's gonna go in and kind of crush his, his voiceover performance. Um, and you know, the trickiest part is like when you're looking at him, like there's nothing there, obviously. It's, a, it's a, uh, a tripod with a piece of green tape or a blue stuffed animal. So you really have to use your imagination. And, um, but really, I, on the day, you could be just looking at anything. It's just imagining what the scene's about. And I would always imagine just like a little 12 year old kid who's just excited to go to Disneyland or excited to see the world and like you have to like keep him calm and you know, and, but you're charmed by him as well. Uh, and that was it and just kind of roll with that. Okay. I mean, yeah, there's always moments on set where you're just like, what am I doing? This, I do this for a living. People pay me to do this. I'm staring into middle distance, nothing. Talking to an imaginary friend and that's my job. <laughs> like what? I'm holding a blue bean bag pretending it's a, a, a talking hedgehog. Like, okay, this is really, this is why people in Oklahoma where I grew up said like, uh, are you sure that's a career? Are you sure you can do that for a living? I don't know. Um, but so I've been very lucky to, to, you know, make a career out of it, but it's fun for me. It makes me, it takes me back to being a kid. We gotta lay low. Let me show you how it's done. Only that I hope that the show of the stand comes out before the real stand happens which is like scary to think about right now with this crazy coronavirus thing. It's like what Stephen King anticipated. Uh, no, we're still in the middle of filming it, so it's, it's awesome and exciting to be a part of something that Stephen King, one of his epic uh, books, and so we want to make those fans happy too. Amazing.